Welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel and in this video I'm taking a break from my series to visit a topic that is very dear to my heart and one which uh, was rekindled again by a comment on Sci.Math. So uh, without any further ado, let's begin. Now, one should never base proof on false propositions. Okay, that is a given, isn't it? And obviously, if one did begin with a false proposition and then do everything right, uh, logically, one should arrive at some sort of contradiction. Yes, well, uh, that's really how it should be. But is it that way according to mainstream mathematics or first order logic? Okay, let's see. So, um, <clears throat> there's a, an engineer who posts comments on Sci.Math. His name is Basam King Karzidin. I uh, don't know if I pronounced it correctly. But he showed ingeniously how one can start with a false proposition and then use the, f the flawed limit apparatus of mainstream mathematics to arrive at a, a result they hold so precious. That is, that fallacy... 0 0.999 dot 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 equal to 1. Now, that is a definition, by the way. No one in his right mind has ever argued that the limit of the geometric series 9 tenths plus 9 hundredths plus 9 thousandths, etc. is 1. No one has ever doubted that that is a limit. But the idiot Leonhard Euler defined it that way in his non-remarkable book called the elements of algebra. Okay, Leonhard Euler was a Swiss, a Swiss mathematician. Okay, so in the next slides, I will demonstrate this proof for those who wish to learn that false propositions should never be used and that first order logic is nonsense that cannot be relied upon by any reasonable academic. So, what is this false proposition? It's the proposition that 1 equals 0. Now, you can do this sort of thing in first order logic. There's no problem, provided that whatever you do after this shows that you arrive at a contradiction. Now, uh, one might say that it's unwise to use wrong methods to prove supposedly accurate results, but 0 0.999 dot 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 equals 1 is not a theorem. It's not a result. It's just bullshit which has been adopted by orangutans in the Church of Academia. So the only wrong step in what follows uh, is the in what follows the proposition 1 equals to 0. Well, let me repeat that. The only wrong step is 1 is equal to 0. The proposition 1 is equal to 0. So any everything else that I'm about to show you is mathematically correct. So we we're, we're only going to assume right over here that 1 is equal to 0 and in everything else that follows mathematically we're going to use the correct steps so now to get from this first step to the second step we add 9 to both sides so 1 plus 9 is 10 and 0 plus 9 is 9 and likewise we'll add 90 to both sides so 100 is equal to 99 so that in general you can have this identity here which you see down here okay 1 plus the sum from k is equal to 0 to n of this expression is equal to 0 plus the sum of k equals to 0 to n of this expression for all n equal to 0 or greater. And of course, n must be a natural number. Okay, I didn't write that in here, but n must also be a natural number. Right, so then we can take the limit of both sides. That's uh, mainstream calculus for you. No problem. So we take the limit of this expression, which is which must equal to the limit of that expression, and this implies that at you know at any given time that one is equal to nine 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 dot 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 over a thousand dot dot dot. Okay, and of course that is equal to what else but zero point nine 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 dot dot dot. Okay, and so we arrive at a supposedly true result which according to bogus math, mainstream mathematicians is a fact, okay? So we started off with a false proposition, did everything right, and we result at not a contradiction, but something which the morons in mainstream academia think is correct, okay? 
So this is pretty interesting. Um, and surely we should have arrived at a contradiction since all the subsequent steps are correct. Well, we didn't. So what does that tell us? Is it first order logic or fool's order logic? I'll let you decide. I hope you've enjoyed this little presentation and that you'll join me again as I continue my series, What Your Ignorant Teachers Could Not Tell You. Please join me again in the next exciting video. I am the great John Gabriel, and this is the New Calculus Channel. Goodbye.